prep area. Well, I remember so walking in there with you guys when it was like completely not even, you didn't even yeah. start construction. Yeah. Which sucked. Uh, you're listening to the Barn Restaurant Podcast, where hospitality lovers come to listen and learn with expert David DiLorenzo. So we're, we're back on the Bar and Restaurant Podcast. I am your host, the DiLo, and I have a picture of myself. Sure. I have two very special guests, two very good friends of mine who I love dearly, Jim, Bob, and Kelsey. Hey, now. Love you back. Aww, <laughs> thank you. Um, the owners of Worth Takeaway, which is a very sought-out restaurant in Mesa. Um, you, you two are very Blushing. humble. <laughs> it's all good. But I want to I, – I, I was so excited to have you both on because, A, I, w- I want people to hear your story – um, albeit there's a lot of people that know about the restaurant, but you guys are pretty quiet as, <laughs> as individuals. It's very hard to, to find too much information about you. So I wanted to kind of dig into where and how and what and, and everything that came from the very beginning. So I'm going to start with Kelsey. You are from Arizona? Um, originally Southern California, but um, I couldn't tell you hardly any memories of Southern California. I've been here for... 30 years or so. Okay. So, yeah. So basically it was just like you were born and whoosh, Yeah, came, they moved right me. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, I could have had, you know, a house by the ocean or something and but yeah, you had to come but to Arizona. Yeah, to come to the <laughs> desert. And yeah. was there uh, now ta- you know, talking to your parents in in the past was there a reason why they had come out just Yeah, um actually my family is um very spiritual and religious. And um, my dad was what he would refer to as a church planter, meaning he would start um, new churches in communities that didn't didn't have a whole lot of churches. And um, there's a lot of very well-known evangelical churches in the East Valley that um, he played a huge part in starting. So, wow. Yeah, that's all I knew for, like, most of my childhood was church. And, and you went to church a lot, I would assume? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twice a week. Yeah. Twice a week. Well, you would do like regular Sunday and then you would do your discipleship discipleship group or, okay. or whatever you want to call it in the middle of the week with your girlfriends and stuff. So And you have siblings? Mm-hmm. I have two siblings. I have an older sister and an older brother. Okay. Yeah. And everybody just came out. Now are they still both out here or no? Yeah. My brother um is six years older than me and he lives in Gilbert and my sister lives in Queen Creek and she's four years older. Okay, so nobody really moved very far from no. Yeah. No. Cause Honestly, if we didn't have a business, we probably would have been the ones to move. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of hard now. <laughs> and you, went, you went to Gilbert High School? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Dude, how do you know this about me? Huh? I, your research. Well, well, I, I can do a little bit of research on you. It, it's the enigma of your husband here that... Yeah. Um, well, you know how much work it is to be a public figure uh, and yeah. to, to uh-huh. put work into being known pu- publicly. It's a lot. and. I don't think we have the patience for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you you have quite a successful business to run on top of that. Um, all right, Jim, Bob, where were you born? Uh, Houston, Texas. Go Strohs, even though they are getting destroyed right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. It's been a rough week. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's been really sad. Sensitive. Yeah. A little sensitive. That's okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping to, like, cast the cheater thing aside and yeah. have them win the World Series without people, like, Saying anything? You like but your you like your baseball, don't you? Uh, Astro specifically. Yeah. Diamondbacks are cool. I can respect them, but yeah. Astro so specifically. Loyal. So growing up as a kid in in Houston, how long were you out there? Um, I grew up in Houston until I was eight, um, and then moved in with my dad into San Antonio for like two years after that, um, maybe like a year and a half, and he got a divorce, and then we moved down by Mexico, which was a really interesting situation, and. He didn't really enjoy it too much, and then we moved to Gilbert, Arizona. Wow. Yeah. And so. and so, okay, so you moved a few times. What was your childhood like as far as, like, your heroes? And, and were you more of, like, a sports guy? Were you more like a stormtrooper guy? Uh, I think my upbringing is probably a little bit different than most. Yeah. Um, my mom loved to party, and I grew up with my mom, and she wasn't really around much. Um, she, like, chased bands and stuff. Yeah. So some people call them a groupie, but, like, she just liked to party. <laughs> so... Uh, my mom like had her own lifestyle, and uh, 
and I ended up moving in with my dad. Um, but when I lived with my mom, like there was no real rules because she was out doing her own thing. So sometimes I'd wake up and it would be Tuesday at 9 a.m. and I wouldn't know that I had to go to school. So yeah, I really didn't like grow up like typical. Typical childhood. But, sort but of. you loved GI Joe and yeah, I mean you know like, um, after toys, school toys cartoons. Were a big thing. After school cartoons were a big yeah. thing for me. Just yeah. like something to encapsulate me. Imaginary friends. Yeah. Had those. <laughs> no, I had real friends, but <laughs> not too many. Right. I lived in an area where it was just um, very diverse, and like, my sister was in gangs and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Got it. Wow. <laughs> yes. Look at I mean, I can dive deeper if you want, but. No, I, that's, yeah. uh, I, I think that's, um, that's definitely a good start. I yeah. mean, I, the, the, the really cool aspect of two very, I mean, oh, you, you look so at the whole, I mean, yeah. like, you know, almost a nun, you know, almost a gang member. <laughs> well, it's like, maybe. and now together running a successful it's, business. I love oh, yeah. it. We yeah. talk about it all the time, how bizarre are like, and how polar opposite our upbringings were. I mean, he was trying to stay out of trouble or didn't even have anyone to tell him what trouble was or wasn't, right. you know, and um, kind of like a really hard life um, with some negative influences around him that if he hadn't maybe been moved out of that environment, um, you know, his life could be really, really different. Um, and that's like kind of diving into like personal moral compass. Like, yeah. I don't understand how he turned out to be like such a good guy as an adult because he just really was kind of in you know these negative environments and then even after he moved to Arizona his dad worked graveyard shifts and so and it was just him and his dad so he was you know making it up as he went I ran solo for a lot like, and I had yeah, all the rules no, yeah. I had every rule yeah every rule known to man <laughs> every rule was you know how I lived my life and I was afraid to like take one step you know off course so it was very interesting that we even get along <laughs> yeah i mean opposites uh, do attract i mean yeah and, and, so know, you're paula abdul and i'm the straight cat that's right <laughs> then, yes exactly got it i wouldn't have used that analogy but okay <laughs> that's the song opposites attract yeah you and i are yeah. pretty much that yeah. same uh, age of generational uh videos that's so funny so okay so you're in gilbert now you're you're pretty much on your own did you High school, college? Was um, moved to Gilbert, like, 1989. Yeah. Same year, pretty much, as Kelsey. 90, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but there is an age gap between us, so it's not like we really crossed paths. If we did, it would have been really creepy, but... Um, We're very grateful for yeah. when we did meet, because it was, like, beyond it that... appropriate. ...that um, time yeah. frame that it would have been weird, mm -hmm. so... My dad always wanted like, to move to Gilbert. Um, he had family that has lived in downtown Gilbert since, like, the 40s and 50s. And so for him, Gilbert really spoke to him when he was younger, coming out and hanging out with cousins of similar age to him. So And they lived under the water tower. Like, yeah. it, like they wow. were like downtown Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. So they, my dad thought it would be a good choice for him and for me to have some cousins around since I really didn't have anybody of a like age. Yeah. Um, and so we moved to Gilbert in 89. Um, just kind of messed around with my cousins for a while. Um, never went, I graduated high school, never went to college. Um, but you know, that's kind of a nutshell in regards to what my education was. Yeah. Other than trying to learn things hands on. Um, you know, I got put in the workforce really early with my dad. It was kind of like, you need to get a job or get out. And, and what was the first job that you? My first job ever? Yeah. Uh, selling newspapers door to door at the age of 13 and it sucked. Wow. Yeah. So um, it was based on subscriptions. It wasn't like, oh, you get paid to like do this. It was you sell stuff, you get paid. So it was my first job and it was all commission based. But there were days where I'd only make like five or ten dollars working like four or five hours yeah. um, and not like getting to like do fun things like go out and horse around sometimes. Um, but Afterwards, they'd take us to McDonald's, and I would just blow five to ten dollars every day. So I never really made any money. Oh, I they wouldn't like, even pay for the McDonald's. You no, have to blow your own yeah. money on it. So that was my first job ever, but it really wasn't a real job. So, but don't you think that even something like that that you remember now just kind of puts in your mind of what you didn't want to do in the future oh. and and like work ethic of just knowing the value of money? Yes, I mean, they used to drop us off in neighborhoods. And this was before cell phones, and it would be like the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Meet us back here in an hour, and you would just like run up and down streets, knocking on doors, trying to wow. get people. And one time they forgot me. Oh, jeez. 
and it was in Chandler. And for me, Chandler could have been Alaska compared to where Gilbert was. Yeah. I didn't know how I was going to get home. Luckily enough, I sat on the curb for like two or three hours uh. till the individual who was driving the van saw me and picked me up. <laughs> so. And it's not like you have anything to preoccupy your time. Like, no, no, nothing. Phone, no, right. yeah. no, Yeah. So I thought I lived in Chandler. But <laughs> I was like, oh, I live in Chandler now. Everything looks so big when you're 13. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's like, whoa. Yeah. But, I mean, when I was 13, I was also, like, riding a bike all the way from downtown Gilbert to yeah. Fiesta Mall. So, like, I wasn't afraid of exploring, but never really explored Chandler. So, for me, I was just like, I'm really lost right now. I don't know where to go. Oh, goodness. It, yeah, it reminds me of being a kid. I remember those areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 Kelsey, you went to ASU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what what is it? What was the degree you got? Diet? Dietetics. Dietetics, yeah. yeah. Explain what that is. It's basically nutrition. It's okay. the science of nutrition. Um, and I think a lot of people, I mean, there's, if you get into the nutrition community and, and the hardcore um, kind of like science approach to it all and the scientific background of it, um, there's a lot of different opinions on the field and the study. And um, it's a much more difficult degree than I think people realize. Um, I think you hear nutrition things and you see what people do on you know the internet nowadays too with nutrition um and you know i took biochem and ochem and like really high level you know science classes yeah that weren't easy and um yeah it was a challenge and and i don't i mean in a lot of ways i don't use you know the specifics of my degree at this point but it taught me how to teach myself Mm -hmm. which is for me as a business owner invaluable like to be able to put my head down for five hours at a time and learn a new, you know, topic or area that I didn't know before that or become more familiar with it and and figure out how to do things. That was for me, my whole college experience, because I kind of came from a really sheltered place. And then, you know, to college where it was like, all right, there you go, figure it all out, figure out your life. So um, learning, you know, new things and, and even teaching myself, you know, through my career um, before Worth, it was a lot of, okay, well, here you go, do this, figure it out. So it was, okay, I have to sit down with a book, and even though it's super dry and really, uh, you know, yeah. uninteresting in some cases, some, sometimes it's very interesting, you know, like certain sciences I really enjoyed more than others, but, you know, sitting down and going, okay, like I just have to push through this and reread the same paragraph five times until I get it. <laughs> and and, and I w- my assumption with nutrition, it's a lot of like the molecular breakdown of proteins and mm-hmm. carbs and just yeah. stuff, how it works within people's exactly. systems. Exactly, exactly. How you absorb it into your body, what yeah. your body does with it after you've absorbed it. Um, there's different, you know, nutrient interactions that you have to look at. You look at micronutrients and macronutrients. You have to, I mean, but before you even get that far, you have to learn about the human body itself and anatomy and so, yeah. yeah, it was a really complicated degree that I did, personally, I probably didn't know what I was getting into when I started. I was yeah. just like, oh, nutrition sounds good. I like that. I read the back of labels and, and right. things like that. But a lot to be proud of. I mean, you think of all the work that you put into it and yeah. the ever evolving aspect of what the word nutrition is nowadays oh, because yeah. food is completely different from That's, what it was even 10 years ago. Right. That's what people don't realize. It's it's a super flexible science in that sense and yeah. really all science is and, and right. you know, on the topic of science in our world today, yeah. um, that's something that I think people who really understand the nature of science and how it works understands that um, it will constantly change because we just are always learning more and disproving theories or finding out more about a certain theory and evolving. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, you kind of have to hold on to it loosely. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So then you're both getting into the restaurant business in one facet of the other. What, what, what was your first restaurant job? Um, my first was cooking shrimp at Red Lobster as a fry cook. That's amazing. Yeah, it was no fun because my KM... um, How old were you? I was 16. My KM didn't give me a timer and didn't really explain anything. So it was just like, eat eat them till you know they're done. So I was eating raw shrimp my first day probably like my first two or three hours. Did that work for you? uh, It wasn't fun. I mean, I was just spitting them out. It wasn't like I was digesting them, but just putting like cold fried shrimp in your mouth. It was like, yeah. So that was my first restaurant job. Um, I learned after a few months, like two or three months that like I did not like working for that individual, not necessarily working in kitchens. Um, but it was like really cool to work as a team. Um, yeah. because like, 
got to get this out at a certain time. And so that was really enjoyable. And then um, I got out of restaurants for quite a while. Um, after I graduated high school, um, I went to work where my dad worked and I hated it because I was doing like 12 hour days. Um, so as an 18 year old doing like 12 hour days and all your friends are out messing yeah. around, that got a little tough. And it was like machine work, right? Yeah, it was, I worked in a machine shop. Yeah. Um, I was painting stuff a lot, um, like airplane parts. So, but that was interesting. I made really good money. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go serve. And so I got a job at Applebee's. And well, which, you hit all the big ones. Which was cool. Yeah. yeah. I got a job at Applebee's and I enjoyed it. I was a server and making two thirteen an hour filling salt and pepper shakers at the end of the night was not like my favorite part. Yeah. And then I got recruited to go work at Home Depot shortly after that because it was in the same parking lot and they would come over and eat lunch and they were like, you should come work at Home Depot. And I was just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I went to work at Home Depot and then I took a long break from restaurants and then Kelsey and Home Depot, me. you were there for seven, almost, eight years? Yeah. So like, and you wore the the orange the apron vest that and, weighed yeah. heavy on your neck. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. I wish it was a vest. No, it was an it was apron. Big, yeah. yeah, I started out pushing shopping carts, and within my first eighteen months, I made it to an assistant manager, and then shortly after that, I made it to a store manager. So you're making decent money at Home Depot. I mean, for dude, I started out your own tool belt. I started out. <laughs> you went over this the other day because we got stuck in traffic for like. We're coming back five from hours. Oh, yeah. So fire. I, this is all very fresh in my mind because yeah. we yeah. just went over yeah. it all. I started out making eight dollars an hour pushing shopping carts, and before I got promoted to an assistant manager, I was making twenty three dollars an hour. So within eighteen months, I went from eight dollars to twenty three dollars an hour. So and this was still in the nineties. Still in the nineties. So that was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. The 90s. <laughs> it's a ton of money. Yeah, like a badge and a tool belt. Yeah. And, I mean all that cool all stuff. That. Hell of people. Wow. And then your first restaurant job. Um. Oh my gosh, I have to like think about it. Red Robin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Red Lobster, Red Robin. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We're the Red that? Babies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um. I served, and actually, yeah. I I served first. I didn't host. You know, usually people host or they're right. a busser or whatever. Um. So I served, and then I actually kind of worked backwards later on in my my career after college and after you know working in the nutrition field. I went back to restaurants and I, the only position they had at, at the restaurant I wanted to work at was being a host. And so yeah. I was like, all right, sign me up. And I'm so glad I did it because I ended up working every position you could really in that store. Yeah. And I, I feel so much better equipped to be doing what we're doing now. So was there I was any, grateful for it. Was there any pressures like as you're going to college and, and, and getting out to look for jobs and do this to get more into the religious field of things or? Um, I think for like my brother and for men, yeah. I think it was yeah. a very like prominent thing. Um, I think when I, I mean, when I got into my late teens, I think my parents kind of, they would have just been happy if I had um, been, been, you know, like quote, a good girl, <laughs> but I wasn't yeah. really, okay. I kind of like went off on my you own rebelled and, a little bit. and rebelled a little bit yeah. and stopped going to church. So I think they pretty quickly realized that that probably wasn't going to be in my career path, that yeah. I wasn't like, you know, some of our other family members My just to give you some background, my dad is one of four boys and all three of his brothers were pastors at one given time, gotcha. including him. Okay. So my dad was a pastor and then all of his brothers were. And so it was a very, you know, our family was very religious. Yeah. So like, I think the men felt a little more pressure to, you know, go that route that um, and some of them have. And, yeah. um, but for me, no, I think my parents kind of, I mean, I'm not going to say they were like giving up on me, but they were, they were like, Hey, if you just could like go to church or like, Stop swearing, or like, <laughs> really like how the fuck am I gonna do that? <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I said, swear on this. I said, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> in, I said, damn it! In front of my dad once, and he was like, "What?" And I think it was twenty-two. Oh. Like he was, it was a big deal. You didn't say the J word, did you? The J word. Jesus. No, oh, oh well. I mean, I could play that one off. No, you, you could. Know. Praise yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. Praise Jesus. Oh my Praise goodness. Him. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> So at, at, at what point now that, that we've gotten you guys up through, you know, your first jobs and this and that, at what point did you guys end up having contact with each other and meeting for the first time? In a restaurant. Yeah, in a restaurant. <laughs> so it's a very appropriate. Um, me and a core group of friends of mine would always go to a place where Kelsey worked, and she was a server. And we would go every
every Sunday night just to hang out. And I there's a happy hour special. Yeah, so that's the happy like hour, their scene. The happy hour is really good. Um, it was raw um, in Gilbert or is it Mesa technically? Technically Mesa. Technically Mesa. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, I helped so, open that store, so I was cocktail. Yeah, raw was there. cranking back then. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was a party. Yeah. <laughs> so we would cruise down every Sunday night, hang out for two or three hours. Kelsey was usually the server, and I never hit on her. Just had casual conversations. It was so weird to me. I was like, this guy is so nice. And he asks me questions about my life. And then when he comes the next week, he remembers my answers and he follows up on them. And he never asks me out on a date. He just like cares about me as a human being. This is really weird. That is weird. <laughs> it wow. felt very odd and out of place. Uh, I don't want to be selfish and ask her out uh, because it was a weekly thing for me and my friends. You didn't so, want to ruin it. Yeah, I didn't want to ruin it. <laughs> you didn't want to ruin the yeah, weekly she easily, yeah. she easily could have been like, no, and then yeah. like the whole vibe. So how many weeks different. does this go by? Oh, it's like a year. Months. Yeah. No, okay. That's, I mean, that's a broad way of looking at it. I think they started, like we started kind of talking in maybe March. Yeah. And then by September, he was like, actually, I, at that time I didn't work there anymore. And so he had like followed up with me and like hey like do you want to like my friends and I are going to a concert do you want to come like it's always like these group things yeah so I didn't even realize it was like, always no too <laughs> what was that concert I didn't you invited you? Um, what was it I invited her to Matt and Nathanson once um where was he playing it somewhere in Scottsdale and then what was the name of that club I don't remember anything Jay anymore I no turned, I turned um, 30 a few years ago yeah. and I don't remember when anything you, anymore when you forget about it's all down how, from now <laughs> um <laughs> And then there was another one, uh, Ryan Adams. Oh, I think yeah. I invited her to that. I said no to that. You said no to a lot, of things. No to a lot of things. Wow. We yeah. did see Ryan Adams eventually, though, yeah. together. So yeah, you said no to a So so some some courting going on, some just being respectful. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I, I was, had I had gotten out of a serious relationship, t yeah. like two pretty serious relationships, and honestly, like. He makes it sound like I was just like cruel and like. No, not at all. You just had no, boundaries. I'm not interested. I just was. I was going through a lot and I was like, man, he seems like a really nice guy and like, I don't want to fuck him up. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so I'm just going to like give myself some time because. How mature of you to think that. I really, yeah. honestly <laughs> though, I really, best. I really was like, I'm yeah. trouble right now and I'm not trying to bring trouble into this dude's life. He seems nice. Like. So what was your first date? Our first date was oh horrible. Um, we went to <laughs> we went to Corners Pasty. Our second date was great. Yeah, but our we first went to was... Corners Pasty, and this she was never... before anyone really knew about Corners Pasty. It was yeah, like it was when just it the was hallway. the hallway in okay. Tempe. Yeah, before they expanded. But I, she was like, "Take me to your favorite place." So I took her to Corners Pasty. And... Well, because you kept being like, "Hey, let's go to Cowboy Chow and all these places that seemed fancy to me at the time," because yeah. I was like twenty two. And so I was like, "Oh my gosh! Like I can't afford to like go to any of these places because." my mindset i'm like oh like i'm gonna help pay for it and all these things you know yeah. like and i can't afford to go to these fancy places and so he's like i'll take you in my favorite place and like everything's eight dollars or less <laughs> that's yeah. perfect yeah. yeah so we went to cornish but it was a bad decision in the sense that it was so loud oh, so, so there never loud. was an opportunity it was to so connect. awkward yes yeah like, there what never kind was of an beer do you like yeah. get this <laughs> Um, and then we left there and went to a bar that was really loud. Um, and then we went to another bar that was really loud. So it was a horrible I remember day. on the last bar thinking, like, holding my beer and just, like, making eye contact and nodding my head yeah. and in my mind going, like, this is so awkward. Like, this is this You is can't really bad. get to know each this other. This is getting Not bad. Yeah, you just right? staring at each other. Like, how beer. is this going to – I don't think we can recover from this is, <laughs> like, what I was but, thinking in my head. But you did. And so the we, second date mm -hmm. of romance was where? We actually did – Based mainly on a car ride. We can't talk about that right, though. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just really PC. <laughs> like, we'll um, tell you off I record. Can talk about some, it. I no. Can make it PC. No. Okay. We're not going there. That's okay. It's yeah. it's your story. You tell but it did you make want. me laugh. Yeah. And it won me over, and it was very. Funny. I acknowledge that it was a bad date. <laughs> I was like, this is probably the worst date I've ever been on, and she aligned with me, which, yeah. like, luckily was she like, wasn't yeah. like, what the hell? It was Cheer really bad. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this is probably one of the worst dates I've ever been on. And so I he said, was this like, I'm gonna tank it. I'm just gonna tell yeah. you this story that's like either gonna make you think I'm awesome or like just put the nail in the coffin. And and, and yeah. so and so you're kind of in this this boundary area, going, okay, he's a nice guy. I'm gonna give him a shot. I don't know. If necessarily the romance is there and you're like I, I, I want to win her over right I was just like this is a last ditch effort but like, you had kissed me already at that point I don't remember because we hung out as a group of friends and we went back to your house afterwards to like I don't know grab someone's car or something yeah. 
and you gave us like the tour and then all of a sudden and this has after after months of us hanging out with like other people in groups and things like right. that um, all of a sudden he like leaned in and kissed me and I remember thinking like, oh, <laughs> that's what's happening here. Like I had not even, yeah. 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 Like I like subconsciously I thought maybe something was there, but I was like, he hasn't put a move on me and it's been months. So I don't think that's what he's after. <laughs> my wife, my wife did that to me. Yeah. She put the move on you. She put the move on me. Off. Oh, I like it. I my pants were off, but. Oh, dang. Uh, it took, it took a while. Man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it was her confidence. I was scared shitless, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's just funny how different roles, yeah. you know, play. You guys going swimming or something? Or <laughs> yes, <kidding>? we were. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so the first date was horrible, and then I said, you know, one of my other favorite places is to eat in Tucson, and I said, do you want to go to Tucson sometime? You said that, but you had never eaten there. You were just trying to hang out with me again. I had some food from there. Oh, okay. But it was all to go. Yeah. I never like sat there and ate. Oh, okay. So yeah. your your plan is it's a long drive. I can get to know her in the car. A little bit of that. Yeah. But also there was a place I needed to show her in Tucson. <laughs> so yeah. um, we went to Cafe Pocacosa in Tucson. Okay. Had a really good it was meal. Delicious. Yeah. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. It was a terrific meal. Really good conversation. Finally, um, there and back. And uh, then on the way out, I was like, how can I ruin this date? And so I said, it's going too well. Yeah. I have to mess this. I have to sabotage this. Yeah. I was like, we might not ever go on a date again. We might not ever be in Tucson again. It's like, fuck it. And so I was like, you want to go to this shithole bar? And uh, I was like, it's been voted the best dive bar in the U.S. And she's like, whatever. And so we went. I was to, having a good time. You know, I wanted to extend it. So we went to the meat rack. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, it's an awful. Yeah. It's, but amazing. It's place. so awesome. Yeah. Um, you, you you <laughs> yeah. So if you get branded, you can get fifty cents off drinks. For like your an actual cattle life. brand yeah. with the owner's face. Oh like, my God. Talk about like you know owner being front and center. Like wow, I'm <laughs> the, sure that's a liability way. Yeah. I I, they my, don't do it anymore. My yeah. keys are in my bag, but like he'll give you a tour. His name is God. Um, legally, he legally. changed it. Okay. It yeah. used to be Jim, but he wanted to go by God. So, Three letters, same yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Uh, God will give you a tour if you have a female with you. So God gave us the tour, and Kelsey found it interesting, and then it gave us something else to talk about, literally the, for the last I 10 years, I think we years could talk too. about the tour, because, like, okay. he would, it's you walk grace. in, and there's, like, underwear and bras hanging from the ceiling. Oh, my there's God, like, it's so sad. It's awful. There's a... Um, like a not like a plaque, like a framed, you know. It's not a frame. It's, it's a. Or is it like, it's like a piece of driftwood memory, that's on okay. the wall. <laughs> yeah. And on the driftwood, if you walk in with a sobriety token, he will let you drink for free the entire night. But so you have to give him your token. Really sad. So all the tokens are like nailed to the wall. Yeah, they're like pounded into the wall. So yeah. after people get a sobriety token, they come in it's there. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. You're just like I'm giving up on. I've never heard yeah. of this. Yeah. Place. So and then all they have on top is like Heineken and Paps. Paps Blue Ribbon. Like before Heineken. it was like cool, like yeah. the hipster thing to just right. have Paps. Like he, it was like, oh, those are my yeah. options. Everything is well. They don't yeah. have anything of the, like everything is yeah. non-name brand. It's like, oh, pop yeah. off, cool. Um, there's photos everywhere of Celebrities that have visited. Gods. Yeah, because it's close to old Tucson studios. Okay. So in the 60s and 70s, Jim, as he was known then, would go and be an extra in movies. And so there's all these photos of him being in like movies as bartenders, like here's me with John Wayne, here's me with so-and-so. And so when he gives you the tour, yeah. he walks you around and shows you all these photos. And like, he's done it so many times, he like nails it every time. He's like, oh, here's me and so-and-so. Here's, uh, you know, I'm horrible with 70s movie stars since I wasn't born in Arnold the Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. They were Clint like, Eastwood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then all of a sudden he's just like, dog fucking a pig and then doesn't skip just, a beat and just keeps just talking <laughs> about it all and there's just like a picture of like a dog fucking a dog pig. reeling a pig yeah wow. yeah and uh so you, you do the whole tour and then when you go to the bathroom he puts a quarter in the condom a, machine and a siren goes off if a female the purchases thing. a condom in the female restroom the entire bar knows it's just a button under the bar that they press well no that's how it is now but yeah. yeah originally it was like you put some money and it's in still there it. to our knowledge his we haven't kids, quite a few years. His kids <laughs> purchased it um, to yeah. allow him to live his life out with his dream. So, uh, yeah. um, but there's we a, haven't even gotten to the worst part. Yeah, there's there's, there's a sex dungeon. Um, oh. It's oh. like room. this it's room that they've downstairs. converted. It's got oh my gosh! It's got a chair that has like 
hydraulics on it. There's huh. like a bed. There's what are those called? It's like a cattle prod thing where no, like no, oh no, no the uh, shackles where like you put your arms. What is that in called? Where you put your arm and your head in? Oh, a stockade guillotine. or whatever. A stock. Yeah, like a stock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then there's that's like fine. a wheel that you they strap people to and spin them. And on he the said wall. the wheels for uh, snow cones. <laughs> that's what he, he like said. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, what the fuck? I gotta get this guy, dude. Yeah. This and All so this drinks. is our second date. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it's a great it second was a, date. And yeah. oh, and the shag carpeting in that place, it was really tall. I was like, I don't want to be walking on this carpet. Yeah, right no now. idea what's like in that the carpet. Tapestries. All the no. drinks had horrible names. Um, like so. The sex dungeon was like the worst part of. It's the whole just thing. so crazy. Yeah. And when we left, like we had. More material, more things to <laughs> yeah. talk about for sure. We still talk about it. I mean, look yeah. at it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, here you guys are. So, like, match made in heaven. You guys are like, yeah. let's, let's meet me at the meat rack. <laughs> let's go. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, you come back from Tucson. You guys obviously, you, you're going through the process of dating and courting and doing all this. And Pretty then, much, tu- Tucson was like, okay, we. Like, we want to keep hanging out. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was, we weren't like official, but that was the turning point for me where I was like, um, what are you doing the rest of the week? You yeah. Know, like, yeah. let's hang out. And you got married 10 years ago. Yeah. So we got engaged. After, I mean, we spent months building up to like just being able to date. And finally, January of 2009, we officially started dating. And then it was almost like I just had to decide that this was. That I wasn't gonna ruin this dude's life, right. and like, okay, like I'm, I'm really gonna do this. And honestly, like, I don't talk a whole lot about this, but now that you know we're doing a podcast and I'm putting my personal stuff yeah. out on the internet, um, it was kind of like a guilt thing because growing up I wasn't supposed to date, and so getting anywhere serious in a relationship like that, plus I had already been through like another serious relationship, for me it was like there was guilt associated with doing things like that for myself in my life. So once I was just like, screw it, I really enjoy hanging out with this guy. I'm going to see where it goes and just like made the decision to jump in like 100% and do it. Then things moved really fast. Then we got engaged like five months after that yeah. and then got married a year after that. Okay. But in between that, at one point, Kelsey just wanted to be friends. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that was before I had decided and yeah. made, yeah, made the decided. decision. I was like, I don't know, like maybe we should take like this feels like it's going fast. Maybe we should. Just well, that's, I mean, you're so space. young at that point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. For the course and, yeah. You know. Yeah. I kept it real with her, though. She said, let's be friends. And I said, I already have enough friends. So, no Yeah. Offense. And then, like, a week went by, and he didn't call me or text me. And, I mean, it empty. it worked. Because I was like, um, why haven't you called me or texted me? And he's like, well, because you told me you didn't want me to. And I was like, oh, boundaries. I yeah. like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> That Imagine is, that. Yeah. That's relationship 101 right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Proud of we, you, have a, we have a good Blow foundation. Them off. Yeah. Blow them <laughs> they off. They it. will come back. Yeah. And if they don't, they're not meant to be. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay. So before you all decided to go into business with each other, which is another like, wow, you know. Um, it's an impulse. I mean, oh, from meat market to or the meat, meat hut or whatever. Yeah. Meat rack to, you know, I mean, what what, what were you doing prior to, to worth while you guys are together and, and married? So Kelsey was going to school. And yeah, had a right when of jobs. we got married, I had fin- just finished college. So while we dated, I was in my senior year of college. Yeah. And then, and honestly, like I, ha- I mean, I had been working to pay for college and things like that, and so it was personally beneficial because I mean, he really supported me during that time to make sure I could focus and like get through that last part of school and not worry about like yeah. you know too much of the finances and things like that, and then. Um, I worked in the nutrition world for a little while. I worked for WIC and I worked for the state um, and audited the National School Lunch Program and did those kind of jobs. And he worked at FedEx and did logistics sales. and sales. And it was a lot of fun. It was really easy. Was it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was so easy. I hit all my numbers for three years in a row and I was like one of the only individual in the entire corporation in the sales department that did it. So like I felt accomplished at it, but I also didn't feel like I was. Yeah checking boxes for my goals. So we uh, like did a pact where it was like, we have to quit our desk jobs because we weren't necessarily as happy as we did with some friends too. Yeah. Yeah. So four of us did a pact where it was like, we have one year to quit our jobs. And no one knew what they were gonna do. It was just like, all right, in a year, none of us are working at the same place. So we had accountability partners. And I don't know who was the first person to quit, was it me? 
No, I think it was Jared. I think it was Jared. And we worked at the same place. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we all quit like one by one. And uh, I, different things. I had a really good job, but I came in with a greeting card for my resignation. And it was like moving on up, even though I had no job. Had nothing going on here. Gave it to my district manager. And I was just like, I'm out of here. And he's like, what do we, what can we do to keep you? And I was just like, nothing. I hate it here. <laughs> I was like, I love the job, but I just hate like working in a desk all day long. It's not your passion. Cubicle. Yeah. 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 He just couldn't stand the cube. So it, uh, then from there, um, I got recruited by somebody else who was a district sales manager for FedEx who left and went to work at Apple. And he was like, oh, it's going to be totally different. And then like I sat at a desk again working yeah. at Apple. And I was just like, man, like is my life meant to be set at a desk right now? And I just wasn't feeling it. Like being on the phone a lot, like just wasn't really me. So I went from a box, went from a job talking about boxes like yeah. I can ship your boxes sitting in a box looking at a, box, at a box a computer oh goodness, yeah. talking it on a phone which is shaped like a box going to another job at Apple in business development right. doing the same thing just talking about different kinds of boxes and I was just like oh man can't do this so we always shopped at like Trader Joe's and yeah. I was just like I'm gonna give Trader Joe's a shot and I was just like Trader Joe's is definitely not for me because the hours that they kept were so crazy some days you would come in at 4 a.m. and then some days you would be there till 1 a.m. Wow. so like trucks are coming in you're putting and stuff you already away. did that with Home Depot yeah you so I was just like I just going back to that don't really think this I is for me it. and uh, Kelsey had quit her job and yeah I was working in a restaurant for a restaurant group and I said hey I think you'd really like this group and they're looking for leadership and you can work at a different store and we can work for the same company, but different locations. And, right. you know, I, I like the culture. I think it's fun. And I think that it would be, you know, a good pathway towards some of your, your goals, which were, you know, at the time for him to be in maybe even like a retail leadership type. Yeah. Environment. Really more engaging with people on a face to face basis. Yeah. Was yeah. Something Cause that, that's what you like to do. Yes. Yeah. Like just talking on the phone. Like I just didn't, I wasn't connecting. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. And hospitality, we always joke around, like, hospitality is, like, socializing for a living. Like, for, for front of right. house, at least, yeah. Yeah, like, I so. can talk to you for a minute, get your food, and come back yeah. and talk to you. So, so. you're yeah. both over at this restaurant group that I know what it is. Um, well, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah we don't care. Hostinos. <laughs> yeah. And and then your, your time is over there, and then that's when, well, shortly after that was when I met you guys, was it? Um, yeah. I casually met you during some kind of like lawyer thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, at the lab. So, yeah. but it was just in passing. There was no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Gilbert though. So yeah. I hadn't met you until we started Worth and met yeah. with you for insurance. Yeah. We sat over at yeah. the right. Newton or whatever it was. And so then, you know, we were inspired by the leadership that was at Upward. Yeah. Um, to do something on our own, let alone travel. And so we took some time you were off. working there for, I was there for almost three years. You were there for a little over two. Yeah. So we took some time off after we left there and traveled with the goal of coming back and opening something. And, uh, you know, it was a lot harder than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. So. Everything's harder than people think it might Well, there's, be. there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of sweat and tears that you guys oh, yeah. all put into that. And, and, you know, people that are listening that haven't been there, th this is not a large footprint, but it is a large footprint in the essence of the amount of people that come there and, and get food from you guys and the amount of production it takes and everything oh that, yeah. you, that you have to do. For the footprint, the volume is, is very high. Yeah. For And especially we don't sell alcohol or anything like that at this point. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot to logistically keep up with because of the volume that comes through such a small space. How did um, – how, how did – the whole sandwich thing come together. I mean, was this something that you guys had talked about? Why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just we had a handful of ideas and um, just doing like studies online. It was like the average American eats a sandwich a week. Yeah, I don't necessarily know how true it is, but I was like, I'm in that category. I eat a right. sandwich I a like week. Like, yeah. yeah. So for us, we were looking for a space and we were hoping that the space would speak to us. And um, we had a couple ideas of some different concepts, but we couldn't. We wanted a space in our community. So we in live Mesa. in downtown Mesa, yeah. and we thought it was important to not be hypocrites and open something further away. And well, because it was one of those things where you know at the time this was five or six years ago, and we um, really enjoyed spending time in our downtown, but it was just really sleepy and quiet, and there just yeah. weren't that many options. You know, it was like how many empanadas can we eat, 
or how many, you know, yeah. how many tacos can we eat? And it was like we great Latin food. Right, right. But we wanted some diversity in the cuisine because we found that we were driving away from our own community more often than staying in it to eat because right. um because just the you know, the amount of options that were there at the time. Yeah. So we didn't want to be hypocritical and complain that there weren't more options and then open a restaurant outside of, you know, our downtown area. So. No, it's great. And and the, the, the fact of the matter is, is like, it's not just a, a sandwich shop. It's, it's a sandwich shop with uniqueness to it. Like, how did you guys come up with those menu items and greet? And was it just well, a lot of... When we found the space, it was a sandwich shop before, but they weren't doing the same kind of cooking that we're doing. Yeah. It was a lot of um, induction burners. Didn't a have lot a of, hood. Yeah, no yeah. hood. Yeah, no the prep area. Well, I remember yeah. walking in there with you guys when it was like completely not even, you didn't even yeah. start construction. Yeah. Which sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I did pretty much the majority of the construction I mean, with it was, one other individual. It was mostly Thank cosmetic stuff, oh right? Gosh. It was it was really cosmetic, but you know, we you had to pull permits for like the gas line and the hood and things like that. But yeah. outside of those big big ticket items, it was such a small it was nine hundred square feet. Yeah. Which really reminded us of, you know, when we were when we took a, a little break from the industry before we started worth, we traveled and we were gone for about six months and it reminded us of a lot of the places on the East Coast or in Europe, um, that were just really tiny kind of in the wall spaces that most of them just like I remember literally getting back and being like what is it with the east coast and sandwiches like everyone just eats sandwiches yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like well I guess it makes sense for their spaces are small or narrow and um, there's not a whole lot of real estate available and so they have to kind of do what they can with the space that they have and that was kind of how we felt about the space that we found in Mesa you so your own you made yeah. it a home for many to come and, yeah. and you must have a ton of regulars that you just See we do yeah. like we see them on the street sometime and it's really weird like the other night we saw our very first customer on oh, wow. yeah, the day that we still did lives friends and family in the area and he walks his dog and we're like oh what's up chicken salad mike because that's, all, that's <laughs> all he, salad would, mike. he likes it but yeah. he would come at like 8 a.m and get the chicken salad sandwich we're like yeah. all right chicken salad mike oh, that's yeah great. that's all he yeah. would order so as soon as like when i was working in the kitchen as soon as i would see him i would just start yeah. making his sandwich just to be like mike's here he wants his chicken salad so, so we established regulars. You established the regulars, and 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 upon opening, um, what was it like? I mean, what were your expectations? And I mean, you know, you guys have gotten a lot of accolades, and rightfully so. But this stuff didn't just happen overnight from opening the door, did it? So our first goal was what fifty sandwiches a day. Sixty. Sixty. Yeah. So we were just like, if we sell sixty a day, we keep the lights on. That's all that really matters. Kelsey <laughs> was the only front of house employee for like. First nine months. Six to nine months. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And then I was in the back and Kelsey's mom was gracious enough to come down and help us yeah. three days a week. Yeah, it was really minimal. And then uh, we had one other employee. Her name is Trinity and Trinity was there three or four days a week. So there was some days where I would fly solo. Um, and then there were some days where I would have support earlier, but fly solo the rest of the day in the back. We were open six days a week from eight to seven then. And so wow. our days felt really long because after that, I would literally go home that night or spend all day Sunday when we were closed working on like the bookkeeping and like the actual yeah. business side of things. So, cause you couldn't really work on the business side of things during the middle of the day if you're the front of house person, because someone comes in and interrupts you every, you know, yeah, you lose your 10 minutes or something. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was pretty grueling, actually. How, how many months did it take you to hit your 60 sandwiches a day? Oh, oh it was pretty quick. Yeah, we hit yeah. it like the second week. I think people in, in the downtown Mesa area were looking for, I mean, one of the things we said is we're going to be consistent because right. understandably so, a lot of the businesses down there had a hard time keeping regular hours just because the light rail construction had just gone through there and sidewalk um, expansion had taken place yeah there were just that. so many changes and and the small businesses were having a hard time keeping up so sometimes they would just be like i can't do this day i have something that came up i have to leave so i'm going to close the shop and so you'd go to get something and you're like yeah. hey it's supposed to be open and it's closed and so for us that was like a reputation that had kind of developed in the area which again like we as small business owners we get it we understand yeah. but we were like hey we think this is really important to have consistency so the hours that we kept being the ones to do those shifts every single time for almost the first year i mean that was that was a 
lot of really? commitment. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was a nightmare. And now you You're obviously exhausted. have people that are, are part of the team that help mm -hmm. you guys to be able to go out and come do you podcasts like during the day. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. we've got an amazing team. I yeah. think right now it's a s team of like 22. Kind of grow around. Yeah. It's right. changing. And you guys did an, you did an extension. We expansion. did an expansion. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was needed because we didn't have a public restroom. Right. And we just hated people coming down and being disappointed with something yeah. that we wanted them to have. Yeah. We had a restroom in the kitchen, but it just wasn't an idea for anyone to walk through our kitchen. Right. So we quickly cut that off. Yeah. It's like, sorry, it's for staff only. Um, but doing the and expansion. You square people back every time. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you have more plans, right? I mean, is there anything? gaggle of plans yeah. like i really want there's a at disney world they're opening the star wars thing no. yeah so that's my biggest plan right now for the next two years <laughs> not business related yeah, no, not no, business I, related I, I, but that's one of my plans yeah, I'll go it's a star you. wars hotel you don't know about this oh no i know i thought yeah. it was open already no, i don't and think it, it is okay so, I'll, I'll go with anyway you. plans for business yeah we've got some things in the work we're trying to relocate our current space into a larger space because we feel that the community has grown that yeah. supported us and our space is still really small. So, yeah. I mean, we went from 900 square feet to 1650. 1650. Yeah. So not really a ton of space. We did like double our seating, but it's not really as impactful. When you only have, you know, 15 seats to begin with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Doubling your seating yeah. isn't crazy. Yeah. So it's not as impactful as it should be. And so we're. And you may get into other things, you know, as far as. Oh, we're going to get into a gaggle of things. Yeah. So. I mean, I would say after the first year, we, um, we saw looking. growth really quickly. Um, again, our community really latched on to what we were doing. Yeah. Um, I think because of that commitment and how consistent we were and, um, I mean, when, when you're there running your own business every day, I mean, you can attest to this, like the, the bar gets set really high and the standards get set really high and people got used to that and they could count on it. So, um, accolades, our first year was the Yelp reward or top uh, 100, top 100 oh, it was here. restaurants yeah. to eat at in the U S yeah, and I mean, we're just like, and people would show up and be like, this place is tiny. And we're like, Right. We didn't ask for the award. Yeah. Like, we're super thankful for it. Right. Sorry that, like, yeah. your perception is this. Sorry it's so small. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. And that was something that we found is that um, outside of what our expectation was, people really, especially, I mean, even though we were technically in an urban setting and an mm -hmm. urban environment, we were surrounded by so many suburbs. And... I mean, we were we would joke around like the mom club would come through with their strollers and they'd be like, where should we put our strollers? And I'd be like, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't I don't know where to park those things because like we, we really don't have any space for that. And so we realized really early on that people wanted a place that they could be. Yeah. And they liked, you know, the look and feel of our place, and the atmosphere and the staff was always so kind and and struck up conversations with them and got to know them. And. Um, and then they liked the food, too. And so it was a place that they wanted to be. And we didn't have a whole lot of that in downtown Mesa, you know, places that felt um, like people could just stay and relax for a little while. And even though we weren't really that, they wanted it to be that. So that's when we started looking for, you know, alternative real estate pretty early on. Right. And it's taken us a few years. We, we do have plans for an expansion still on Main Street. Um, next year, yeah. but it, it's taken this long to get there and to find the right. Well, I remember spot. looking at several places with you guys, even yeah. like a year and a half ago or something yeah. like that. But your your commitment to the community is absolutely huge. I mean, you guys also took over the Mesa Farmers Market. Well, technically, yes. we didn't take it over. There was no farmers it market. It had shut anymore. down for yeah. a couple years. Shut down. Okay. Yeah, and so and we started a you new start, one. You revived it. Yeah, we revived it and redid it pretty yeah. much. But we felt that it was important for people to be able to have food in the community yeah, um, and to have access to that. And help other small businesses have, you know, yeah. a baseline of, of where to start growing their business from, you know, have a place that they could actually um, low risk go and, and start selling what, whatever their product was. So cool. You know, so that was a big thing for us. Um, people like you and, and Scott Holmes from Little Miss Barbecue. And you know, we had a lot of people early on that were very generous with their time for us. Yeah. That, you know, if we didn't have that guidance and that those connections, that worth might not be what it is and what we've been able to grow it to today um, without that insight and that help. And so we we feel really strongly that it's important to pass that on and give our time to other people, too, and give other people resources to be yeah. able to do their own thing. So. <clears throat> well, I, I'm humbled by your statement. It's, it's so beautiful to be able to help 
you know, just other beautiful energies that are out there. And then, like you said, to be able to give back and, and you hope that that sort of contagion is the contagion that we want to see moving forward and not this yeah. other shit going on in the world. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's What's going on in the world. It's, it's amazing. I don't know what, you know, what day <laughs> is it? So, but no, that's, that's really cool. And, and I'd be remiss without talking about, um, Jim Bob's burgers. So you have to, you have to tell <laughs> the, the crowd so, about, so we do a pop-up every year on Halloween but it started as a joke. I mean, we so we do different specials at Worth all the time. We found that if we did rotating specials, it kept people. I mean, we started with six sandwiches on our menu and like three breakfast items, and people yeah. got through our menu pretty quickly. Right. So it turned into like, okay, well, let's do a different special every week. And at one point, one of those specials was a burger, and it was like a joke because we love the show Bob's Burgers. You know, like, oh, it's like Jim Bob's Burgers, you know? And so it was just like an internal kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and as a, you know, finally, after a couple of years of joking around and sitting mm -hmm. through painfully slow Halloween services. Our Halloween before the first one that we did it, we probably did like $300 in sales in the evening. Oh, wow. It was and just It was almost pathetic. like, should we even be here? Right. Like, maybe should we, we should down. close. It's scary alone. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It was, it was just us sitting around because we sent everyone else home. Yeah, yeah. It was Kelsey in the front and me and one other employee in the back. And, like, I was making him do tasks where he thought I was just joking. I'd be like, like build seven, 70 grinder sets. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. And then I was like, no, for real. Like, we have to have something to do. And, like, I'm like, this is what we sell we in, like, productive. four days. No, we really did. Yeah, this is what you. we sell in four days. So, yeah. like, we need to get our pars right. And it was just crickets the whole night. The business that was next door to us was, like, handing out candy. Yeah. And then they walked in at the end of the night with, like, bags of candy. And they were like, like no so one slow. showed up in a while. Here you go. You guys want some candy. So for me and the one employee, he was like, this is the greatest. Like I'm hanging out with mom and dad eating candy if I want to, or I got all this free candy. Um, so we were literally at the end of that night, we're like, we gotta do something different next year. And so, at least to entertain ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And you did. <laughs> so we thought it was gonna just be a joke. Right? Yeah, so we just, it was one of those things where as business owners, when you do something new, sometimes that kind of gives that breath, fresh breath of energy and, and, and new, kind of life into what you're doing like oh this is fun and this is like for us and so when we started jim bob's burgers it was like well let's just dress up the store for halloween like let's really do it let's do a pop-up let's take grow it seriously mustache. yeah grow your mustache, grow your mustache out <laughs> um let's take it seriously let's really transform the store let's not serve anything from a regular menu like we're committed like yeah. if we're gonna do it we, we have to really do it so um, we started planning it like a couple months beforehand, which was probably pretty rushed considering um, what we did. And we took down all of our art. We took down our menu board. Um, we put we had you know graphic design or graphic designer come through and, and do different designs and stuff for us like parody art. We invested so much money in the first year, yeah, because yeah, we like, were just like screw it, this is for us. Like we're having fun we're planning it, yeah. this and and doing it and thinking of like little details that like shouldn't matter, but just are fun for us. Like yeah. Easter eggs that people who love the show, if they right. do come down and you know, if, we're, if we do more than $300 in sales, like people you know who come will appreciate yeah. it. And more importantly, it also allowed the staff to do something different. Like when yeah. sometimes things get monotonous, monotonous yeah. and yeah. like the specials allow the staff to feel like things aren't monotonous. Yeah. Um, and we try and allow the staff to move to different positions in the kitchen based on certain days. Right. Um, so like those are the things that we can control but doing a pop-up like Jim Bob's Burgers, it allows us to do something completely different where people yeah. are like testing their skills even more, especially with what the volume turned out to so be. So yeah, what happened? Yeah. So oh like we usually we do like 250 to 300 covers a day on average. Okay. Um, which for our space is it's huge. It's dumbfounding. Yeah. But the first, first year, like when we did the orders, we told like, our reps like we don't know what this is going to be like we might need to call you and you might need to relay some stuff to us and they were like yeah 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 sure it whatever. started to get once we promoted it it started to gain some traction so we're like okay like we'll have people here like yeah. this will this will be a thing yeah so we sold out of our initial food order by the end of lunch and it was we like were, two o'clock yeah we were like we were like out of food yeah and the staff was like are we done like what do we do and right. so like i'm calling the rep and he's like i don't i don't have any product for you i'm sorry yeah. i can go pick up some some ground beef chubs and you guys can just patty them yourself and we were was literally like, like patting burgers to order i was like, like Dude, you it was so, realize how evening, busy we are it like, was insane yeah. wow. we did like i want to say 40 percent more business that day than we had on any of our busiest days like Whoa. it was insane 
That's crazy. Yeah, and then we got a lot of feedback because we did it on Halloween. We yeah. got a lot of feedback from people who were like, I really wanted to come, but my kids are in school earlier in the day, and then we trick-or-treat right. at night. And so we were like, well, it's our busiest day. Should we do it for two days? And yeah. it can accommodate some of those people who are unable to make it on Halloween. And we did it for two days, and it was so next year, yeah, even busier for just two. It days. was mind blowing. Like, but yeah. this guy, he's like the king of logistics, and like had everything planned to a, to a T. We take really, really great notes each year now afterwards, and so and this will be our third year. So we go off our notes from last year and, and go, okay, you know, what was it like, and what percentage over do you think we'll do? And even last year, I'm, we went pretty aggressive with our orders and things, and I'm so glad that we did, but. He was getting people. I mean, actually, Little Miss Barbecue lent us uh, a flat top to do it because oh. we only had a six burner and we were yeah. like putting these planches on it to do it the first year, and it was a nightmare. Yeah. So we like swapped out equipment even for it, and it was yeah. yeah, it was crazy because the line last year would be anywhere between eighty to hundred people, and if you were the last person in line by the time, and this could have just been a fluke from last year, but like it was awesome. If you were the last person in line from the time it took you to stand in line order your food and then get your food was 20 minutes it was a solid 70 people for like three or four hours wow yeah, yeah. That, that's that's so, amazing and that yeah. speaks that well speaks deserved. volume in regards to the team more than anything else you know the planning beforehand like we can do that all day long but yeah. when the team executes the execution is, is what really just, matters it was just so it's all hands on deck yeah. So, yeah. So, so we're getting ready to do it again this year yeah so. yeah the 30th and the 31st yeah we're super excited about it we've got or like parody merch that we've done this okay. year since yeah. concerts aren't really taking place. Are there backstage passes? Because oh, we should figure something out for that. <laughs> I don't even know what you would get with it. <laughs> Maybe just like get your burger though. quicker in the Some back VIP door. VIP stuff, yeah. <laughs> I'll pay extra. VIP what are you, packages. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got my pass. <laughs> and now the podcast is full circle. <laughs> that, that 20, that Twenty minutes just went down to two minutes. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I so. You guys are now in a position where you have a successful restaurant, you, you have successful, you know, uh, putting together of aspects of having, you know, employees and business and mindset and all that. So getting just into your guys' perspectives of when you're away from the restaurant and you're together and you're hanging out with friends and doing all of your, your, your own stuff, what are some of the values as far as I, I want to talk specifically about like your own, you know, your own food, your own fitness regime and, and your own like meditative, you know, focus, you know, types of types of things. Those three F's. I want to, I want to know what you guys value or cherish. Friends, food, and what was the other one? Fitness. Fitness. <laughs> Is that it? Um, Lat- f- food, fitness, focus. Yeah. yeah. Lately I'm about fit and food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kelsey's got a pretty good regiment. Um, my back has been hurting me lately, but we did buy a Peloton. Okay. Um, and I <laughs> technically we're we're renting to own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Got zero percent financing. It's great. Yeah. Um, and I've enjoyed that. Um, I think I like a treadmill a little bit more, but yeah. With the gyms being closed, the Peloton has made some sense for me. Yeah, we've done some more at home stuff. Um, for me, I mean, honestly, starting your own business and the amount of energy and work and stress that it ends up being. Um, For me, I really had to, in the first few years, focus on how I was going to balance it. And um, it's really, really easy as a small business owner to neglect yourself and to not make time for yourself and um, create burnout. And so my my mindset is always like, how, how can we avoid burnout? Like, what do we have to do? And how do we rein ourselves back in? And, and we're recognizing where that line is and when we've crossed it and when we have to back up and take some space. And so one of the things was like, you know, we would go on a trip, you know, finally after I think year three, yeah. things were stable enough that we could like leave town for a couple of days. Um, Cause before that we really couldn't. And, and so that was nice, but then we found like, okay, traveling and things like that. And you're almost like more tired when you come back. It really has to be a daily thing that yeah. you're creating balance. Otherwise it's just not sustainable. So, um, I do enjoy, I think for me, I have kind of like an underlying depression that I didn't realize until I got older was kind of always there. And I found really good things to help me, you know, naturally combat that a little bit. Um, Fitness is one of those things. So that always changes. But early on it was, you know, I had to deconstruct a lot of, you know, religious things in my life and kind of figure out um, 
some peace for myself. And, and through that, I realized, okay, like I don't need to have like a spiritual chore list. Right. And sometimes meditation is going for my run or going for a hike or, it. you know, so that's what really helped me create some balance was not having crazy expectations on myself Perfect. and listening to my body and what feels good and what feels restorative. So um, sometimes so. restore like restoration is drinking a half a bottle of wine and watching Game of Thrones, you know, oh, like yeah. <laughs> right. sometimes it's, Hey, like we started a second business and we've been doing a farmer's market every weekend. And I just need to lay in bed and watch seven hours of Game of Thrones because like, yeah, yeah. I haven't been in bed like that for months. So you, you absolutely it changes all the time. Yeah, right? It has to be flexible. Spoke so eloquently to what it is that I, I think people as individuals, to what it is that I, I think people as individuals, um, you know, uh, when they take the time to look inside of themselves and, and see what they enjoy for mm-hmm. themselves and right. not, not look any further than that, because sometimes you can go down the wrong path of saying, oh, my God, this is the right way, when really you only yourself know right. the right way. So that's a, that's awesome. Thank and you. and for Jim, I really think it's um, social interaction. You know, like yeah. he really, his cup's really filled when he spends time with friends and things like this where we're just yeah. having conversation and not focusing on work and, you know, there's no expectations. 100%, yeah. We're trying to, like, outdo one friend with beer all the time. Beer, that's his thing. I, well, I'm going to come and sit on your couch and watch Mandalorian with you because I think that would be some exciting. Beer? Yeah, well, you don't, you're not drinking right now, right? No. Yeah. no. It's been, what, like a couple years? Uh, oh yeah, you don't. Six and a half. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So. <laughs> right now. <laughs> but that's okay. I do like yeah. a nice turmeric tea. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. I with have that kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we'll do we'll do that. All right, I have some quick question, rapid fire questions for you guys. Either one Are can they answer. Yes or no's or, or oh no, they're okay. better than yes or no's. All right. Like, okay. Um, Fruit Loops or Count Chocula? Um, um Post O's. <laughs> that's that works. <laughs> You're a Count Chocula? Um, out of those ones, yeah. I, I would say oh, I did just have a beer those. with honey. those cereals, though. Did you see? Yeah. That's, uh, it was a, it's yeah. Count Mashula from but Jay Wakefield in Florida. I, I'm more of a chocolate lover, though. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Um, a hotel room or an Airbnb? Airbnb. A hotel room. Really? Yeah. I we guess Airbnb, it kind of depends, because we go back and forth. We airbnb it so much when we traveled, because yeah. we... Uh, first, we were like, let's stay in a hostel. And it was like... We won't be together. Mm-hmm. And then we started looking at Airbnbs because we could stay in the same room, of course. For like ten dollars more. Yeah. So that made even room. more sense for us. But the amenities sometimes of a hotel is really cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. If it's an Airbnb, I like it to be like separate quarters as much as possible. That way, I don't feel like Privacy, I'm imposing. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Um, okay. A, a long hike up in the mountains, or would you rather do like a fifty-mile bike ride? Um, where's the bike ride? Where you want to go? He's like, do I? Can I have a beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably more of a bike ride. Kelsey's probably more mountains. I'm mountains. mountains. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. Um, podcast or the radio? Podcast. Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you rather be reading a book in the woods or would you rather have a beer on the beach? Uh, I think <laughs> both going to be opposite. I'm on the beach with a beer. Woods. Woods, like, yeah, I see a lot of your travel well, for your birthday. You're up there in Flagstaff. Yep. yep. Yeah, that was super rad. That was awesome. Um, barbecue or pizza? Um, That's like a really loaded question yeah. for Jim. Where's the barbecue from? Wherever My you pick? All right, cool. Barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pizza. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Uh, Van Halen or The Cure? Van Halen, 100%. I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> No offense. The cure's too sad. It's a, it's a little touching. Yeah. 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 Um, Disneyland or Catalina, Catalina Island? Catalina Island, the Catalina wine mixer, Disneyland, one hundred percent. This dude, like, hey, do you want to go somewhere different for vacation this year? No, I just want to go to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Disney Paris, and I was like, only if we have enough points on our credit card yeah. can we spend the money on this. And, and I was like, it's sucked. gonna be a letdown, dude. And he did not believe me. And then we did it, and he was like, it was a letdown. It sucks so. Well, hard. you were texting me pictures from Star Wars Land when you guys. I think you oh, yeah. first. Oh, yeah. out of the people that you knew. Yeah. I was like, we didn't go like the first day. We no, went we waited later. a little while. Yeah. You, yeah, I waited a little bit too, but you were still. I'd probably you go to be the, the wine mixer. Yeah, <laughs> cantina's blow? a rip off. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. You even warned me, but I'm like, yeah. I gotta experience. You still it. have to do it. Yeah, you gotta go inside. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta go inside. All right, last one: gardening or baking? 
Um, we are actually trying to start a garden here soon, so. Yeah, we're cleaning up our backyard. Yeah, so gardening. Probably gardening. I mean, I do, I like to cook more than bake, so I'd say gardening. Okay. Yeah. We got a neighbor across the street, though, that's got a dope ass garden. They like yeah. distribute it to, oh, what's the now? What's pomegranate. It? Pomegranate cafe. Oh, pomegranate, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so like they. It's not a garden, it's an urban farm. I, I, uh, I'm so jealous. I gotta have you guys over to my garden. It's a vegan it's like urban farm too. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really rad. It's cool. Yeah, she gave us a melon, a cantaloupe one year, and I Dude, was like, oh my gosh, this is the best cantaloupe, cantaloupe I've ever had. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to like tell yeah. Kelsey to quit eating it. <laughs> this is not any good. Well, I'm just covered in cantaloupe. You're hiding it. Yeah, <laughs> I hide stuff in the fridge for my wife all the time. She, now she knows. She sometimes finds it. Unless know? she doesn't listen to your podcast. Oh, she hears enough of me. <laughs> She'll probably listen to this one because she knows you guys. But um, no, this was so cool. So where can everybody find you where you want them to find you as far as social media or, or any yeah. other stuff? Um, Instagram and Facebook, Worth Takeaway, and Jim Bob's Burgers. And Mesa Farmers Market and Flea. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mesa Farmers Market is the handle oh, for, okay. yeah, you don't have to have the flea part for that. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for cool. hanging for out with me. Us. We actually, fun. we cruised uh, over an hour. This is the most hour. we've talked about hour. ourselves is, yeah. in, a, in a while. Other than the stuck in traffic, this is the most we've talked about ourselves for, in a while. Absolutely perfect. So, yeah, thank you, everybody, for, for listening. Um, and watching. And yeah. and watching, if, if you are watching. But anyways, um, please, if you get a chance, um, go on to the... Uh, go on to the podcast. You can you can listen to it through Apple, Spotify, any of those. Give us a five star because they're really cool, um, and you know it just helps with the circulation of it. Also, join the bar and restaurant podcast list. We have a lot of uh, cool giveaways um, with uh, gift certificates and stuff like that to you know restaurants out here in Arizona. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you to Bar Restaurant Insurance, my company, for sponsoring the bar <laughs> podcast, and thank you to local. 480 for the production. Thank you to Casey, who is a rock star, and Christian, who's a rock star. And uh, we will see you guys on the next podcast. Bye.